Okay. Thanks everyone for attending today's Veterans Advisory Commission meeting. It is 1.32. Uh, we'll get started here in just a moment. Um, if we can go to the next agenda item, please. Uh, are there any commissioners that would like to volunteer for the pledge? Commissioner Anderson, are you uh, able and willing? I'm I'm able. I'm willing. Um, Thank I am you. Standing up, sir. Um, okay. And uh, I would say, um, hands over heart, or if wearing cover uh, per veteran uh, regs, uh, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, of, States America of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Thank you very much, Commissioner. We'll get to our next agenda item, number three. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, could you please do the roll call? Commissioner Leal? Present. Commissioner Moore? Present. Commissioner Jackson Kelly? I, I seen you earlier. Commissioner Jackson Kelly has her uh, digital hand raised. She's present. Commissioner McFadden. Commissioner Allman. Present. Commissioner Campbell. Oh, she said she would be up. Commissioner Rodarte. Commissioner Gutierrez. Present. And Commissioner Anderson. Present. Chair, you have a quorum. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. We'll get to our next agenda item, please. Uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, so if everyone, uh, the commissioners could take a moment to review the minutes, see if, the, if there are any edits. If none, we'll need a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Commissioner Jackson Kelly, if you're able to go on mute, uh, there's some static on your line. Thank you. Uh, I should also note for members of the public, um, there has been an update to the department website where you'll be able to go back and, and take a look at these minutes once they're approved. Is there a motion? to adopt or approve the minutes. Jolie had a motion to approve. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Commissioner Anderson mm -hmm. seconds, thank you. Stephanie, um, we'll do uh, a roll call to approve the minutes. Commissioner Allman. Approve. Commissioner Leal. Approve. Commissioner Moore. Yay. Commissioner Jackson Kelly. We're having difficulty with uh, Commissioner Jackson Kelly's line, so we'll uh, maybe look towards the chat. Let me see. Commissioner Gutierrez. 
Yay. And Commissioner Anderson. Yay. You have six yeses and if Commissioner Jackson Couch, I believe she said yes with her hand raised. That's yes. a hand raised, so I think I'll take it as a yes, but we'll double check uh, <laughs> to reflect the minutes. OK, thank you all very much. Next agenda item number five, please. OK, uh, the chairman report. Um, so as always, I like to start with the notice of meeting that went out through the email list on April 7th at 10.42 a.m. Um, if you have not received that, you can go to uh, the website where there should be a pop up to join our mailing list. We're currently sitting at almost 20, 27,000 subscribers, which is excellent. So, you know, hopefully the word about these commission meetings is getting out there. But if there is somebody who uh, is not receiving the emails, you can go to the website and um, sign up for the Gov delivery list and receive not only commission updates, but updates from the department as well. Um, we do have uh, for our second item, the strategic action plan has been um, an outstanding item for the past couple of months. We were waiting on uh, appointment of, of Commissioner Anderson um, Commissioner Anderson, I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to review it, but there's still, I think, a couple more vacancies for uh, roles and responsibilities. So I think what I'll do is I will push this um, to a vote at the next meeting. And I'm not sure, you know, if other commissioners have any edits or suggestions. Maybe we could set up sort of an ad hoc committee to address those concerns if there are any takers for reviewing the strategic plan one more time. It, it, it's an option. I don't think it's mandatory, but one to throw it out there as an option. Do you think it's needed or are you think does everyone commissioners think by next meeting we can vote on this and, and put it aside? I, I, I think we can be ready by next meeting, certainly. OK. Any other commissioners? I agree. OK, great. Yeah, I agree. Next meeting works. Thank you. OK. Fantastic. Uh, I always mention this. Uh, our meetings uh, a week after they are adjourned are on our YouTube channel or not ours, but the department's YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity, please go to YouTube, search for LA County Military and Veterans Affairs. We currently have 18 subscribers, which is two more than our last report. So we're slowly getting to 100. Uh, if you haven't done so, please go subscribe so we can get 100. Uh, and then that allows the department to claim a unique URL. So it'll be easier for everyone to find. So I appreciate if everyone did that. And then the last thing I wanna mention regarding the leadership structure. So currently we have a chair, obviously myself, the vice chair role is currently vacant. And what we would do as a normal course of action is do a nomination in May, uh, an election in June, and then seat the vice chair uh, in July. There's something I want to throw out there to the commissioners. I think I've spoken to some of you individually about it. It's just an option to consider for restructuring how the chair and vice chair um, assume their their positions. If we can go to the next slide, I just want to discuss this as a concept. Um, so this is an idea that I've sort of circulated, but each uh, district has two commissioners. And so rather than electing, you know, a, a chair and a vice chair, maybe we can organize the commission to rotate by super, uh, supervisorial district. And I think that that's to me, I think it's a great opportunity for each district, giving each district an opportunity to lead. And then, you know, theoretically, it would go through a cycle and then uh, reverse. So we would start with the senior commissioners, go through a full cycle. After that's done, then we switch to the junior commissioners and then back to senior. Um, so this way, it's an opportunity for uh, the districts to all share in the leadership structure of, of the commission. 
So it's it's an option. I think you know what we would need to do is probably draft some language, and uh, we don't have that language right now. I think it's something that if you all were interested in, I could work on between now and the next meeting. And then sync the election of the chair and vice chair to when the supervisor rotates to take over the chair role for the board of supervisors. So in theory, the uh, chair of the board of supervisors and the chair of the veterans advisory commission would be synced by district. So when SD4 takes over, SD4 takes over the veterans advisory commission or when SD5 takes over the chair role for the Board of Supervisors, SD5 is in the lead for the Veterans Advisory Commission. Um, to me, it's just a cleaner setup, but I wanted to just put it out there for um, public discussion amongst the other commissioners. What do you think? Or do you prefer the old um, mechanism of you know, voting for and electing a chair and vice chair? Sure, uh, Commissioner Jolial. Um, I like it. I think it's a good process um, for it. I like change. Looks great. I'm good with it. I don't know how the other chair, I mean, how the other commissioners feel, but I think it's a great idea. Thanks, Commissioner Leal. Any other commissioners? You know, is, is it worth drafting some language for us to look at, or <clears throat> do you think the tried and true? Is it is as good as it needs to be? Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't have. I mean, I think it'd be worth this, uh, Commissioner Gutierrez. I think it'd be worth uh, putting something together for it. The only concern I would have is that uh, if there are ever vacancies, what would we do in in the uh, case of that? So, because mm -hmm. I think for a while recently we've had some vacancies so it was and it took quite a while to get somebody seated right so we'd have to have a, a, plan, a plan for that that's okay all. that's that's a, a good uh you know identifying a achilles heel in, in the plan so we'll have to account for that uh, chairman Anderson, allman. Do you have your, mm -hmm, go ahead uh chairman allman yeah my only other concern would be um continuity um mm -hmm. If we do it uh, by election, you know who your vice chair is, and that's going to carry. Mm -hmm. And that can be very helpful, is just in terms of continuity. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just draft some language for discussion purposes, and we'll sort of vet this idea a little bit more at the next meeting. And then um, if if it's something of interest, maybe plan to uh, have a separate vote. Um, but we still need to run it by, I think, um, commission services regarding bylaws and stuff like that. So um, we'll have an update at the next meeting. That will conclude the uh, chair report. And then we'll move on to, uh, I believe it's public comment, uh, although I cannot see the slide. So. Uh, Commissioner Kelly, sorry, I see your hand raised. Are you able to uh, voice an opinion? Okay, the hand is down, so I think we'll move on to the next agenda item. If we could get the um, slides back on the screen. One second, please.
Stephanie, I just received notification from Commissioner McFadden. Um, she had to call in, so she's in attendance as well. If we can annotate that. Once we get the list of public speakers, we'll start uh, public comment. And as a reminder, everyone is um, limited to three minutes and the registration is taken in order uh, of public comment registration, which goes out with our notice of meeting. having some technical difficulties we're working through. Yes, give me one second. I'm having issues with Adobe at the moment. Okay, no problem. Commissioner Jackson Kelly, I see your hand is up again. Do you want to try using the audio, see if it works? It's a little bit of static. I think you're on mute. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, our first public speaker, uh, Jennifer Wicks, are you there from SD4? I am on. Great, thank you so much. I will start your time. And again, just as a reminder, it's three minutes and your time starts now. Sounds good, thank you. My name is Jennifer Wicks. I am a county employee, but I am commenting today as a public citizen. I live in Supervisor Hans district. Did you know that people who have served honorably in the armed forces and have a service connect service connected disability are provided with veterans preference points in the hiring process in many other jurisdictions, including the federal government, the state of California, Orange County, the city of Los Angeles, and I'm sure many more. However, the County of Los Angeles's definition of a veteran as it relates to employment purposes is not inclusive of disabled veterans. The Department of Human Resources staff, after consulting with the Chief Executive Office, County Council, and the Department of Military and Veteran Affairs have confirmed that to me. The Los Angeles County Charter and Civil Service Rule do not currently provide veterans preference points for veterans who have who have a service connected disability working for the county i am confident that the current policies do not align with how the county values veterans the topic of veterans preference points was most recently addressed by the board in a 2003 motion by supervi former supervisor don kanabi that was nearly 20 years ago I'm asking for the commission to look into this issue and to make the necessary recommendations to the Board of Supervisors to allow for disabled veterans to receive veterans preference points for the County of Los Angeles employment. Thank you. That concludes my comment. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, that I did not know that. So that's something I think um, we might uh, look into in further detail. Um, Stefan Malloy, are you are you there? Are you available? Stefan Malloy. Last call. 
Stefan Malloy. Okay. Uh, Natasha Robinson, are you there? From SD5. Natasha Robinson from ST5. Okay. Uh, Ms. Suttle, are you there? From yes, SD2. I'm here. Okay. I'll start your time and feel free to start when you're right. Good afternoon. My name is Latia Suttle, retired U.S. Army Chief Warrant Officer. I have um, been speaking to this commission for a few years now about the issue of veterans not being properly identified in the family court and when cases open with DCSF and the children's court. Um, you know, at one of the last meetings, it was said that the uh, meal 100 form worked for veterans in the family court, it does not. And we had, you know, I have spoken about that multiple times and it has been verified by the ad hoc committee and the board of supervisors and several others that it does not work. It works only in the criminal court. Um, and I know that there have been some recent efforts to try to get someone from DCSF to come speak to this meeting. Um, I know there has been a, uh, some change over in the, in the director of DCSF. Um, Bobby Cagle, the previous director, resigned, I think, back in December or January. But uh, Virginia Pryor took over immediately as acting director. And I think now as of April, uh, Brandon Nichols is the acting director. Um, I'm not sure if there's a problem getting in contact with these people to meet with the uh, commission. And uh, if so, there's another um, option is to communicate with the commission for children and families. I used to attend those meetings as well. And DCSF staff members used to uh, attend those meetings. So um, I could put some information in the chat about that commission. I'm not sure, you know, if these two commission, if this commission on veterans and the commission for children and families meet, but um, they have their next meeting April 18th from 10 a.m. to noon. And so I can put that information in the chat because DCSF personnel does attend those meetings. So um, I just wanted to bring that to your attention again, because that's still an ongoing issue with veterans uh, not having any type of support in family court and children's court and having their children removed. And some veterans here locally have not seen their children in years and there's no criminal charges against them. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Ms. Suttle. The next speaker, James L. Smith II from SD2. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you okay. uh, having me the opportunity. Uh, I, I'm here on behalf of the Deported Veterans Advocacy Project and uh, the Black Deported Veterans of America. Um, looking for support in uh, helping to return two veterans, uh, uh, veterans that have been deported from the L.A. area, um, uh, Rohan Coombs and Rudy Ackerman Richardson, um, and trying to get support from uh, that area in bringing him home. Uh, also trying to get support in uh, helping our story get out, uh, the, the, the stories get out uh, by possibly sharing them on uh, the YouTube site. Uh, and then also helping to set up transition plans uh, for the return of these two veterans, which would actually become a model to be distributed to other cities because this hasn't been done yet. Those are the guys, the, of the guys that I know that have come back they're struggling to figure out what it is that, the, you know, to do the, the change in technology in the 10 or 15 years that they've been gone. Uh, some are wondering whether or not they can, they're, they're able to work. Some are here just on humanitarian parole. So they're really only given basically a year to try to get all their things taken care of and, and re, uh, uh, reassess themselves. So uh, I believe that there needs to be a transition program to set up for them to come back, uh, also to deal with physical and mental health uh, issues that, that's there and that those models don't exist yet. And I'm reaching out to you guys to see if you can help 
help uh, do that. Okay, Mr. Smith, is that is that the end of the uh, public comment, or you still have a minute and uh, about ten seconds left? If if you have anything else to add, uh, well, I mean that that would be pretty much it. I mean, I left a a, a video link uh, in the request so that uh, it could be distributed, so anybody that didn't doesn't know or really know the story or what's going on with deported veterans. Uh, would be able to uh, look that up. But if I briefly could tell you that since 1996, it's estimated by the ACLU that more than a, a few thousand have been deported uh, since uh, that time period. Uh, it's only They've only identified about 300 uh, around the world. Uh, unfortunately, most of those have been just in the border areas of Canada and, and Mexico. So uh, those that have been on the outskirts have missed out on a lot of the news. That is how I, the Black Deported Veterans uh, came about um, uh, as I was out there looking for them. So there needs to be an outreach towards that. So um, that video will help anybody that uh, wants to know. So uh, if you still have it and anybody asks for it, please feel free to share it to them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. I appreciate it. Our next speaker, Rudy Ackerman Robinson, is that right, or was it Richardson? Are you there? No, he was supposed he was supposed to come. He's in London, but he he wasn't going to be able to make it today. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Elmer Jacobs from Paralyzed Veterans of America, Department of California or California Chapter SD One. Are you there? Elmer Jacobs. Elmer Jacobs. Okay. Well, that concludes uh, public comment. Thank you, uh, members of the public, for bringing these items to our attention. Um, it allows the commission to sort of get an understanding of what's happening in the community and for us to uh, investigate further. Um, so, with that being said, if we can please get to item number seven. Okay. Uh, our guest speaker today, one of three guest speakers, we have Christy Hernandez. Christy, are you there? I am. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Great. So, uh, Christy, we'll, uh, we'll set up 10 minutes and I'll probably uh, give you a two minute warning and then a 30 second warning just to give you an idea of your time. Okay, um, I'll do my best to, to get it in under 10 minutes. Yeah, sorry about that. It's a, it's a tight schedule. Do we have the uh, the Boeing slides? I think so. Next slide would be the yeah. okay. So and before uh, we get started, actually, there is a quick video that I wanted to share. So Jose, can you can you cue that up, please? Ignition sequence start. 10, 9, guidance is eternal. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hi, Tanya. How are you? I'm sorry. Um, so just wanted to get us started with that video. Um, it never gets old for me, just sort of captures a few of our really cool products. So um, with that, we'll go back to the presentation and just wanted to take the opportunity to present myself. My name is uh, Christy Hernandez and we can move to the next slide um, for this one. And I'm the Senior Government and Community Relations Specialist at the Boeing Company. Uh, you can find my email address there. 
and uh, just wanted to share for those of you who might be meeting me for the first time. Well, first I have to say, it's great to see um, a number of familiar faces and names. So hello to everyone. And um, just wanted to share for those of you who are meeting me for the first time, I'm a California native, born and raised in Los Angeles. Go Bruins and Go Trojans, I'm a Brojan. Um, so I always had to make a shout out there. And uh, just in my 20 years, uh, my professional career, I think the common thread has been government and community relations. So I've had the opportunity to work in education, um, civil rights, in healthcare, the California State Legislature, and uh, Department of Defense, Legislative Affairs. And also before coming to Boeing, I was at UCLA leading their Veterans Affairs Relations uh, and Programming. So really glad to be at the Boeing Company. Uh, and the next slide is um, a little bit more about what I do in my current role. So I support our national strategy and engagement team here in California. So I'm still able to do a bit of the government and community relations aspect uh, at the state and local level. And I get to help out with our strategic partnerships, employee engagement, and also connecting the company to the community, which I really love. And I'm able to do through three different areas, which is high school, uh, workforce development, and veterans portfolios, um, which I will touch on a little bit more. But before doing that, I wanted to zoom out really quickly and go to the next slide, um, just to give a quick overview of Boeing for those of you who um, may not be as familiar that we are a, um, a leading global aerospace company that has a workforce of over 140,000 employees across the country and in 65, um, in 65 different countries. And also we have customers in 150 countries, so a pretty large reach there. Um, but we're also able to extend our reach with leveraging talent um, from other folks in uh, with regard to our 12,000 suppliers globally. Uh, we do have a very diverse team as a result. And in our next slide, you'll see that we're organized in three different areas, um, which include commercial airplanes, global services, defense space, and security. And then the Boeing Capital Corporation supports all three of those different uh, business units. What's really special about California is that we're one of very few states um, across the Boeing enterprise that captures all three. And so that being said, on the next slide, you'll see um, how we're just capturing California and the work that we do here. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please. And you'll see that we have four major sites. One is in El Segundo, oh, yeah, in El Segundo, Long Beach, Seal Beach, and Huntington Beach. And the workforce here in California is over 12,000 employees. And um, we work with over 2,200 2, suppliers. Um, overall, our direct and indirect um, job support um, supported our 166,000. And so um, one, we have a number of other subsidiaries in the area that I'll, I'll touch on a few local ones, um, but we also have 35,000 retirees in the state. And two fun facts. What, the first is that aerospace in California has a larger economic impact than agriculture and Hollywood combined. Uh, and the second is that California is home to the largest uh, satellite manufacturer in the world. So speaking of that, we want to the next slide. Um, that satellite manufacturer is actually located at the El Segundo site. And I'm sure a number of you have probably seen our Boeing site on your way to LAX. Here's a quick pictorial tour of um, the 1 million square um, foot state of the art site. And here we house um, defense, space, and security. And the executives that sit here include space and launch, government satellite systems, and also our commercial satellite systems. Um, two of our subsidiaries include Millennium Space Systems, which um, creates some of our smaller, more agile satellites, and then Spectralab, um, which is located out in Silmar and creates really high uh, efficient and powered um, solar pa uh, panels. And so um, with that, uh, I just wanna share that well, we go on to the next slide um, because what I want to share with Spectral Lab specifically, they just celebrated 65 years, but they are actually one of two suppliers in California that have created the solar uh, panels that are on actually powering the International Space Station, which is that first image there. But all the products that you see here are in some form or fashion created, manufactured, tested, and shipped out from the El Segundo site that's right here in our own backyard. So you're probably thinking, how do we create the workforce to help create and build these really cool products? 
Well, in the next slide, you'll see that the community engagement aspect of the work that we do at Boeing that I'm um, really excited to be a part of includes three pillars, which are on the next slide. Uh, and that includes our future, and that focuses on early education, K through 12, STEM programming, and work the workforce. In addition, we have the Our Heroes pillar, which focuses on veterans and their families as it relates to the um, transition into the civilian workforce and rehabilitation and recovery. And the third pillar is our homes, which historically we focus on the environment, but we've also have um, a focus on racial equity and social justice. So on the next slide, we'll get to dive, dive in a little bit deeper here with regard to veterans. And Boeing is really proud of our commitment to hiring and our investment uh, in veterans and their families. So again, the workforce transition, recovery and rehabilitation are really key for the work that we look to do. And 50% of our workforce, and sorry if I sound like an auctioneer, I'm just trying to get through this. <laughs> um, uh, 15 percent of our of our uh, of our workforce um, are veterans and actually last year 18 percent of our new hires were veterans but last year alone across our enterprise uh, domestically and internationally um, we invested 13 million dollars uh, across 108 different grants and in the last five years we actually uh, invested more than 54 million in support of veteran programs um, again just showing the commitment to this population and um, on our next slide, just wanted to highlight a few recognitions that we received as a military friendly company from um, IVF and Diversity Inc. And also just um, to share that we are number one in top 10 supplier diversity programs. So on the next slide, wanna really bring it back to California and the work that we're doing here. On the right-hand side, you will see that um, a number of partners across um, Southern California from Los Angeles County to other surrounding counties all the way as uh, um, south as San Diego. Actually, a few of our partners um, are on this call today or you all may be familiar with um, those partners that are listed there. So hello and thank you for all the work that you all are doing. Uh, on the left side of this slide, this is to capture the work in California across all three pillars, education, uh, veterans and our home. We have invested 12 million across the different um, pillars, but also that includes contributions from our employee community fund. And um, speaking of our employees and engagement, they have given 45, over 45,000 hours of their time to volunteer at local organizations. Um, I also want to share that at Boeing, we have business resource groups where um, our, my colleagues are able to um, participate outside of their traditional roles or whatever yeah. their official roles might be. And one of I'll those, um, excuse me. Sorry, um, sorry if you could please. Uh, veteran engagement sorry, team. sorry, Christy. Just a reminder for everyone to go on mute and uh, you have about two minutes left, sorry. Perfect, I think I'm gonna get it in here. Um, and so one of those um, business resource groups are the business veteran engagement team, which allows us to build community and um, offer different sessions and resources to um, veterans and the latest trends. So always looking for organizations that might be willing to share their resources or you know, to speak to our veteran um, colleagues. And there in the middle, just want to show uh, share a post um, from a recent visit by Congressman Cardenas uh, at Spectral Lab. He came to celebrate our veterans and provided each one of them with a challenge coin um, so again, just some of the work that we're doing here in California. Um, on the next slide, you'll see just a bigger picture of a number of our partnerships um, across the three different pillars. Um, and then on our, my last slide to wrap things up, and I think I'll meet my 10 minute mark here. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't share that. Um, you go to the next slide, please. Uh, if I didn't share that we are hiring. So if anyone is interested or knows someone who might be interested in applying, um, you'll find the website there, boeing.com forward slash careers or jobs.boeing.com. Um, and, you know, please feel free to share that information or reach out to me um, if you have any questions. But I want to thank um, Chairman Anthony uh, Allman and the rest of the commission for your time and uh, open to any questions. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you so much. Um, it's, uh, it's an aerospace you know, Veterans Advisory Commission theme uh, today. 
And I noticed that there's um, substantial sort of granting to organizations. Could you sort of maybe explain to the commissioners and members of the public if there's an organization that's interested in applying for a grant, how would they go about doing that? Absolutely. So um, we're actually um, just wrapping up our grant season. But if there is interest and you think, um, you know, I definitely one would encourage you to visit our website where we have our um, our guidelines as far as what we're looking um, to invest in. And there are opportunities for either a grant where you are, um, it's an invite only. So if you're invited to apply, that's an opportunity. There might also be sponsorship opportunities. Um, if an employee nominates you, there's also an opportunity to receive a grant through our employee community fund. And then if there's also opportunities for volunteering, like we have a number, one thing that I've really been encouraged by um, are the number of employees who are willing to give of their time and to volunteer. So uh, I'm always willing to, to meet with folks, hear more about the work that they're doing, talk about alignment and potential opportunities for collaboration. Usually the grant season will open in March and then close um, with the application in April, late April. Great. So you Thanks can contact so me if you have any questions. Uh, and then Jose, if you reminder, want to go to the slide three, um, my email address is there. Okay. I think we had uh, everyone go on mute. Um, thanks. So, uh, commissioners, uh, any other questions for uh, Christy or of Boeing before we move on to the next agenda item? Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Great, thanks. And sorry for the delay getting you on the agenda. We were a little backed up, but I'm glad. I'm glad we did it. No worries. You all are pretty popular. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Chairman, oh, uh, uh, Commissioner Joe. Commissioner Leo, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to thank that was, um, you know, Boeing has done amazing things for veterans and I know Commissioner John Gutierrez uh, is a huge advocate and champion for Boeing. Uh, he's always talking about the benefits, and I and, and it's very, it's a it's a beautiful exchange when we're engaging with service members, and we ask the service members uh, if they're employed, underemployed, and most of them will raise their hands and they'll say, "Yeah, I work for aerospace," and they mentioned Boeing, and that actually happened recently, and we asked, "What do you think about Boeing?" And they have nothing but positive things to say about Boeing and its training and all the opportunities. And they feel that there's a lot of forward momentum, opportunities for growth. So thank you for being here. It does mean a lot to us. And the feedback that we're getting from the trenches in this particular case, those reserve units has been very positive. So thank you for, for making your time to speak with us today. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you so much, Commissioner Leal, for, for that feedback. Um, I, I do appreciate it. It's, it's been a pleasure partnering with JBS as well. And I, I do want to share that although I didn't serve, I am military connected. Um, my uncle is a Vietnam vet and two of my cousins served in Afghanistan. One is actually still a Marine Corps reservist and was just promoted to a gunnery sergeant. So very proud of him. But this is definitely something that's near and dear to my heart and having worked at Department of Defense and you know, I just a greater appreciation not only for the service members, but for their support system and the families that support them in order to make the sacrifice um, and, you know, for our country. So thank you to all and, and again for the opportunity. And I'm, I'm really glad to hear about the feedback. Great. Any other commissioners before we move on? Uh, just uh, Commissioner Gutierrez, I'm just going to echo what uh, Commissioner Leal said. Uh, it's good seeing you again, uh, Christy, and it's it's always nice to hear about all the partnerships uh, that Boeing has and how just they support the, the veteran community. Uh, and I, I had no idea of uh, just uh, uh, how much veteran workforce was at Boeing. So that presentation was just, it was great. Thank you again. Okay, great. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Christy, again, for, for making it out. Um, yeah. We'll move on to our next agenda item, please. Okay, we have Brian Bilski from Northrop, uh, a senior talent acquisition partner, but also a retired Marine Corps veteran. Um, I uh, attended a VPAN event in the city of San Fernando and Northrop had a tent there. 
and I spoke to uh, the the gentleman, um, you know, sort of running the the table. And I learned a great deal about what Northrop is doing for veterans, specifically homeless veterans and workforce development. And I was really, um, really just amazed. It seemed like an amazing program. I think more people need to know about it. And that's why I invited uh, Northrop here uh, for our aerospace aerospace themed um, veterans advisory commission event so brian if you're there feel free um, to take it away all right well thank you very much and uh my name is brian bilski and as uh appreciate the opportunity to represent northrop grumman and my boss ken friend who is also uh you know a veteran army ranger and very uh what i say uh involved in the community there in the Los Angeles community. And uh, we're, we're very, uh, as a veteran and uh, my prior uh, position with the Marine Corps was transitioning severely wounded, ill and injured Marines back to hometown USA. And from that experience, it's truly about community involvement and working with the communities. So we'll, we'll go on forward and uh, next slide. Maybe, um, while we're waiting for that. Um, very similar to Boeing, Northrop Grumman is a major aerospace and defense. We uh, hopefully uh, hopefully get the slide in. Um, but anyways, we're uh, again 100,000 strong, uh, 50 states, 28 different countries, and uh, many opportunities throughout uh, the world. Similar to Boeing, uh, our headquarters. What I work for is aerospace sector, and uh, we are located in Palmdale, California. So similar to Boeing, we had 26% of our workforce out there in Palmdale last year were veterans. Across uh, Northrop as a whole, our veteran hiring is 22%. So, you know, very, again, very uh, veteran friendly, very uh, veteran oriented to uh, opportunities. So I'll just, what I wanted to do is focus on our connections in the community of Los Angeles. Uh, in California, we got El Segundo, we got San Diego, we have Palmdale and a few other places. But so we just want to focus here in the Los Angeles community. And as you talked about the homeless veteran program, I know uh, Ken Friend started that NG6. It's been successful. And again, it's not just Northrop Grumman. It's collaborating with you know the, the government, the city government. It's collaborating with other employers. It's collaborating with the wraparound services that support these young men and women as they go through their journey and then eventually you know have opportunities to find rewarding career opportunities and that's where we try to come in and support that uh, uh, career opportunities and then also if we can't hire we want to make sure that we're coordinating with other employers uh, Lance campers and others who uh, Amazon and others who can uh, help also employ those uh, homeless veterans so Continuing on with that. We're also working with JVS SoCal. We just actually had a large hiring event. Uh, over 250 uh, folks were interviewed. Uh, we're working on over 100 offers right now with more to come. But over in the last three years, it's been a very fruitful uh, partnership, uh, hiring over 200 folks in the last three years. So we're also working with them on developing apprenticeship programs for uh, pos positions there specifically in Palmdale uh, that will help you know our our entry level and those who are looking to get into trades programs opportunities for a rewarding career opportunity. Also you know Northrop Grumman University uh, this is something we start with Kathleen Barter's office uh, working with Antelope Valley Community College to provide uh, for, uh, I hate to say free because free no cost training how's that uh, no cost training in aircraft structures uh, to uh, veterans of the Los Angeles uh, County. Right now we have registration going on. Deadline is 23 May, but this is a great opportunity to get their foot in the door like those others uh, to complete a training program that once they successfully complete the training program, they will have an interview with Northrop Grumman. And as we do with Antelope Valley's normal aircraft structures program, uh, provide opportunities for interviews following those, uh, following their uh, completion, and which is honestly a large pipeline into opportunities there in Palmdale. So again, working with North, uh, working with Antelope, working with uh, Kathleen Barter's office, uh, looking to 
see if we can find some veterans to uh, participate in Northrop Grumman University. Uh, as I mentioned, along with the uh, communities, it's about co coordinating with uh, our local education, uh, co community colleges and uh, high schools. So working with uh, another college, College of the Canyons, we recently had uh, 62, uh, did a hiring event with uh, College of the Canyons, had 62 offers with them to their graduates, and we'll continue on with that. We're also working with uh, Lost Angels, program uh, to provide those young men and women uh, who are uh, training uh, for careers, providing them opportunities and connecting them with other community colleges so that once they're done with Los Angeles, uh, they have further on uh, development in their careers and then eventually uh, yeah, leading to career opportunities. Uh, shoot, there we go. Uh, also, uh, SkillBridge. So SkillBridge is a program where uh, we're providing many opportunities for you know, transitioning service members from all brand branches and all ranks, uh, providing them opportunities to come work an internship with Northrop Grumman at many of our locations. This is also outside of uh, not just California, but across uh, the enterprise of Northrop Grumman. Uh, so far, we've had over 100 opportunities with uh, about a 90% conversion rate to full-time offers once they complete that apprenticeship program. Following over, uh, you know, Northrop Grumman as a whole to support our veteran population, our veteran community. We host virtual military hiring events or briefings, I should say, that talks about opportunities within Northrop Grumman, support that we provide veterans such as SkillBridge, such as our website, which is down there, that talk about resumes and anything that helped them, you know, prepare for their futures and or veterans who are already out, you know, help them find uh, career opportunities. And again, me personally, it's not only about Northrop Grumman, but it's about helping the, the veterans with any uh, careers that they're looking to go into. We can't hire everyone. I know, same with our friends at um, Lockheed, they're very committed. They can't hire everyone. But I think at the end of the day, uh, we're, bo we're both committed to making sure that our veterans find opportunities, whether with one of us or another employer. And then virtual hiring events. Uh, we'll be doing virtual hiring events. I believe you know the first one is going to be, uh, we're going to do those first Friday of each month. So we'll make sure everybody has uh, situational awareness on that. We're going to do a first one is going to be Friday for May in Palmdale. Uh, it's going to be both virtual hybrid, kind of virtual and in person. I know that information is getting out, but then following that, uh, we'll have a battle rhythm of the first Friday of each month, uh, providing virtual uh, hiring events for our veterans, not only in L.A., but all across. So if you have folks who are looking for opportunities, uh, we have many. We have a large hiring uh, uh, need in Palmdale, so uh, looking to fill those opportunities with veterans as many as we can. I prefer <laughs> uh, veterans myself. So that's it. Um, again, my name's Brian Bilski. If there's any information, um, and we actually have a, another gentleman that works with us that's near and dear to us, uh, so uh, I'm sure you're all familiar, John Gutierrez. Um, but Looking forward to uh, continuing working within the Los Angeles community and always looking for opportunities where we can participate in services and support for our veterans and their families. That's a bit. Thanks Any for, questions, please let me know. Thanks, Brian. This is uh, Anthony. The uh, one question I had is the Antelope Valley Community College program is in aircraft structures, but I believe the College of the Canyons is a material application, right? They're two different programs, depending on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That one's more like coatings. Um, it's for the, uh, it's escaping me, the uh, coatings. It's the uh, 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 stealth, uh, gosh, I, I forget the program, but you're correct. They are the fabrication and then the other one's kind of more like for, um, Boy, this is a bad <laughs> brain fart. But yes, uh, College of the Canyons is more of a, and they're also at College of the Canyons doing more of a machining and okay. um, coding, machining and coding. So uh, yeah, good programs. And I know like the folks from the Los Ange Angels are connected with them and uh, trying to be a feeder into those programs and additional uh, support for their education. Do you know if, if the, I assume, the uh, College of the Canyons and Antelope Valley, you know, are both um, 
certified for GI Bill eligibility, but it, it, do you know if, if that's um, if veterans going through the program are using their GI Bill, even though it's a no cost program? So the one with uh, so potentially right if they go through the okay. Northrop Grumman University, they don't have to use their GI Bill. If they're okay. attending Antelope Valley Community as a uh, regular student, they could mm -hmm. uh, use their GI Bill. And that's another thing is we're also, why we're developing these apprenticeship programs, many folks may not know that the GI Bill can also be applied dur during apprenticeship programs. So mm -hmm. similar to when you attend four-year uh, education and they get their BAH you know, during their GI mm -hmm. Bill, they can also, for apprenticeship programs, once they're approved through DOL, Department of Labor, uh, use their GI Bill to offset some of their costs and expenses as they go through those programs. So it's, it's kind of a win-win for veterans on both sides. Great. Um, James, uh, just as far as a protocol, the, the commissioners are only allowed to ask questions. Um, so I see that your hand is raised, but this, the, this part of the meeting is for commissioners to ask questions. Um, so I apologize for not calling on you. Um, do any other commissioners have questions of Northrop, of Brian? Going once? <laughs> Going twice? Hey, this, uh, this is Commissioner Gutierrez. So I know I just want to say uh, uh, thanks, Brian, for, for coming out and, and presenting today. We're all familiar with the work that um, uh, Ken Friend has done, and it's just remarkable to see that you can take someone that's homeless, get them housed, uh, put them through a training program, and, and get them into a career, and have them continue on for, to a four-year degree. I mean, it's just it's just a it's a it's a really good model that you use at Northrop. Um, for uh, you mentioned, what, do you have an idea of how many people you're hiring in, uh, in the Antelope Valley right now? Right now, we have a need for over 400. So we have got an all out hands <laughs> need for uh, 400 uh, folks. Uh, right now, we've been told 400 uh, between now and the end of August. So, yeah, so we're going to be out there, you know, working with the community, working with JVS, working, you know, doing the hiring events. So we'll make sure that we get the information out to uh, the commission here. And so that you can share with your contacts, your networks, and uh, definitely, you know, would love to hire as many of those as veterans and, you know, everyone, right? You know, we, we've hired a lot of people in the community other than veterans, but uh, the more we can do with our veteran community and population, would be awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. Yeah. And, and then, hey, if, if anybody has any uh, questions following this, there's my contact information there, Brian Bilsky at ngc.com. Feel free to shoot me a email and or, hey, if you, you know, we're always open to new opportunities. So if you see an opportunity, an education program that may benefit veterans that we could participate and uh, be a part of, yeah, we're always open to opportunities to connect and to collaborate. Great. Okay, any other All commissioners? Right. Brian, thank you so much for coming and yes. uh, we look forward to staying engaged with Northrop moving forward. Hey, I apologize for my car office here. We're actually going to a hiring event here at Camp Pendleton in a few minutes. So uh, hopefully we'll hire some veterans here also. So take Excellent. care, everybody. And no pleasure. problem. Thank pleasure to so be much. here. <laughs> take care. Thanks. Our next agenda item, I believe, is a presentation from VPAN on upcoming events. Mr. Zenner, are you there? I'm here. Thank you, Mr. Excellent. Chair. All right, your uh, your five minutes starts whenever you start. Wonderful. I will uh, see if I can share a screen here. That's not what I wanted to share. Here we go. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I think I was requested to uh, come present on um, different events that are happening in your areas. Um, so we, the way we have this organized is by geographic. 
uh, events uh, that are happening in person first uh, by SD and then we get into the virtual. So for SD1, here is the first two. Couple different events with first step. Here is the next two. Sorry, Jim, for folks who are maybe on the phone, do you want to maybe go back and just sort of give them a general idea of where these events are taking place? Sure. Some people aren't patched in via video. Gotcha. Thank you for the reminder. Um, yeah, so first step is having an event around uh, staffing. Um, they have uh, job openings. Oh, this was put together last minute, and uh, that's, this is like a, a January one, so I apologize. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to what I'm going to have to do uh, uh, chair is I'm going to have to uh, redo this and send this out afterwards. Um, the team. Okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, we we messed up on that. I didn't mean to throw a wrench in the plan, but um, no, no, you... that's good that you said that because that is this is the wrong. Uh, this is the wrong slide deck uh, that was put together. So we'll we'll get put all the events by soup district as requested by the commission and send that out digitally. OK. Do you do you know the schedule um, offhand, or do you want to reschedule this briefing for the next month? Yeah, we can we can uh, reschedule it, and uh, we'll be better prepared for next month. Okay, no problem. Um, in the meantime, now that we have you, it's two and a half minutes. You want to give us any updates on VPAM? Yeah, I think the most significant piece and we and and I've gotten feedback from the commission in the past about this, but um, really right now our field services for VPAN are only available Monday through Friday. Uh, the department authorized the hiring of 16 more staff, which will allow us to provide after hour and weekend coverage in the field in addition to the support line. Um, granted, hiring in the county does not happen quickly as as Miss Stephanie Stone can uh, attest to. Um, so we're looking at a timeline of hopefully um, around end of summer to have all those additional staff onboarded, trained, and providing services uh, seven days a week. Um, so that is really kind of our goal, the, the biggest development on our end. Um, and it's feedback that we constantly get from the community is what about the weekends? What about after hours? Um, our problems don't just exist nine to five. Um, so very excited about that. Um, what we're ultimately moving towards is a deployment of uh, peers real time. So if somebody calls a support line seven days a week, uh, we would be able to deploy a peer if needed. Uh, say, for instance, I've responded to a veteran who was out of gas with his family up in San uh, Fernando Valley, uh, went up there and, and uh, made sure they had gas to get home. Um, another scenario that we get quite a bit is is uh, veterans who maybe just finished their job at a car dealership and they were getting ready to go to sleep in their car again and they said this is enough. I want to get off the street. Um, traditionally, uh, VA doesn't have anything after hours or on the weekends, um, so we're very excited to be able to provide real time response uh, in the uh, in this year um, for veterans and families that. Uh, you know, in those types of situations and desperate and and about to sleep in their in their car or, or sit on the side of the road for three or four hours, um, hoping to uh, get a good Samaritan to pull over and give them gas. So very exciting. Um, and thanks. Thanks for giving me that two and a half minutes. And again, I apologize <laughs> for the uh, nope. for the uh, the mess up on the slides there. No problem. Uh, commissioners, anyone have any questions of VPAN? Uh, Commissioner Joe Leal has a suggestion. Great job. Outstanding information to hear that the seven day non non um, excuse me, nine to five um, efforts are going to be now uh, span uh, day and night. So thank you, Mr. Zender, for that. That's amazing. You're 100 percent correct. We We have to be not only ready, but we also have to. Uh, be available those nights, those cold days, those holidays. We just have to be available because typically hot weather and or the weird weather that we've been having helps those veterans that might not be ready to get housing to now be asking those questions because, you know, the weather, the changes in weather does help uh, many of those wanting to seek housing. 
And then obviously when we do house, word does get out that this is happening. And of course it sparks their interest and therefore we're out there providing those services. So I really appreciate that. Uh, I know for a, a VPAN SD1, uh, we are ready and willing to match you for those weekends, something that uh, VPAN already does. For most of the SDs are already on those weekends. Uh, that just is now part of what it is that we do. But and it was always a pleasure. And thank you for wanting to submit those upcoming events. I know that those wellness events are play a crucial role, uh, especially because we are having those even on those weekends. But uh, thank you, Mr. Zender, as always, always uh, happy to have you presenting VPAN, DMH, and everything. So thank you for your time, sir. You bet. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks, Commissioner. And I'll say I, I came across the Northrop Employment Initiatives at a VPAN wellness event, and uh, it was very um, informative. And I just thought it was a great program that we should all hear about. So any other commissioners before we get on to the department report? Okay, Jim, I think you're off the hook. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate the update. And we'll move on to our next agenda uh, agenda item, which is our standing department report with Director Stone. And you, I believe, yeah. We're just going to let Jose know to leave that slide up. Thank you so much. And good afternoon, commissioners and guests. Um, for the month of March, MBA counselors have filed a total of 705 claims totaling nearly $700,000 in retroactive pay and over 90,000 in monthly awards. As it relates to the continuum of care, as you know, we have 75 vouchers. We are leased up to 51 veterans now, and we have eight in the pipeline. That said, MVA staff is working closely with LASA staff and receiving three to five referrals per week. So we're hoping to fill in those last few vouchers. Um, I want to share, uh, as you as you mentioned, Commissioner, um, that uh, some of this information sometimes we get it and it ends up in a uh, in our own little silo. And so, as we move forward, uh, I like to bring to the commission partnerships and um, initiatives that the department is working on. And for this month, I'll, I'll speak on the partnership with the David Lynch Foundation. Um, our Communication manager Kathleen Pache brought this to us several years ago, and we started working with them. David Lynch is a Hollywood director who started a foundation that focuses is on the practice of transcendental meditation. And uh, TM, or it's as it's called, is not a religious practice, but rather a science-based practice. And more recently, they, although they've always provided free training, or for many years have provided free training to veterans. They have just received um, a, uh, a grant for our first responder firefighters. So um, we're connecting them with Chief Osby and his staff to try to start training um, our LA County firefighters in TM. Uh, along with that, they are uh, the DLF is or the David Lynch Foundation is also um, holding a um, national study on veterans with PTSD. They are partnering with VAs across the nation and here in Los Angeles, working with USC as research, as the researchers to, um, to study veterans with PTSD and the, and the beneficial factors of uh, TM. And so with that, we are, we've connected them to USC. We're working with them as it relates to our partner agencies, such as VPAN, DMH, and others. Um, and uh, we will be working with the foundation directly to train our, our staff in the practice of TM. And our, we'd like to invite the commissioners as well for those who are interested in receiving that training. We'll, we'll get the information out as soon as we confirm a date. More than likely, it will be the last Thursday of a month when we can bring all staff together for that training. There is a upswing, as you may have heard, in the COVID variant, BA2 variant. With that, DPH is encouraging indoor masks, um, excuse me, indoor mask, and as well, they're also encouraging the second boosters in the community. If you want to see if you're eligible or if you are where the um, vaccinations are being given out, you can go to myturn.ca.gov 
.gov, that's myturn.ca.gov, to find out where they're giving out the second boosters. In terms of initiatives this month, I'd like to talk, um, just share with you that we are working with the girls, Women and Girls Initiative um, and uh, working on the gender impact assessment. This is a very new process for us, so we've only had one meeting. I bring this to your attention because in future meetings, I will bring that staff member in to talk about the actual training or excuse me, actual study. Um, we're going to be tracking um, gender equity on three points. The first is employment, how well we do as a department. Secondly is um, on, on clients served. And um, lastly, uh, for a future study and how well we serve our, our uh, veterans in the military diversion courts. Again, this is related specifically to gender equity in the military diversion courts. That goes beyond the vet courts but rather the pre-trial courts as well. Um, and also uh, beginning this month, I'd like to invite staff to tell you more about what they're doing within uh, the department. We have some great people working on some, um, doing some heavy lifting. And uh, first of all, I'd like to invite uh, Kathleen Pache to speak on the new website. Kathleen is our MBA communications manager and. Jose, would you give Kathleen control of her of the screen now? Go ahead, Kathleen. Hi, everyone. Uh, so glad to be here today. It's good to catch up and hear what's going on in our county with regard to veterans. Um, just a little background. I started reworking the uh, or the project to reboot the redesign the website the military and veterans affairs website about a year ago to actually get money from the ITF fund from CIO in the county that's the um, technology fund that they they will grant certain departments money so MBA um, got the money to redo this website and the whole idea was to make it more interactive and more usable uh, from the public standpoint. So I'm just going to, I was told I had five minutes, so I'm just going to review this very quickly, and I would hope that everyone um, could go on and um, check it out and make sure that um, it's serving whatever questions you have. We're gonna, I'm going to start at the top left. Um, this email, um, if you have a question or a specific question that you're not finding on the site, you would go there and an email will go to a couple different staff members to answer questions on a mobile device. If you press the um, our phone number, it will dial that directly. And then for those of you who don't know, MVA does have a Twitter, Facebook and YouTube um, social media site. So on the far right, if you hit one of these, it will take you directly to those social media sites. Um, on the services and benefits, we're told um, we we had a brainstorming session with VSOs and they said this is the most important for all our veterans. So you can go down this um, list of compensation, pension, education, healthcare locations, death benefits, dependent benefits, forms and FAQs um, and look at those to see exactly what's on there. I personally did, redid the frequently asked questions and spent an entire day reviewing um, different veteran questions all over the state. Um, I think the one, and you can go through these and find them. Um, obviously we have VPAN right here um, because they're in the building in our partner section. We have AJCC, John's uh, group, and then US Vets. And then we have the ones that have offices normally in Patriotic Call too. Um, but the one I think you guys would probably be mo most interested in is the commission page, which if we go to that. Um, you will see there's a description of the commission. I hope everyone can see this. There is um, the address of Patriotic Call. Hopefully soon we'll be having in-person meetings. We have the latest agenda. If you hit that, the most recent or upcoming agenda will be there. We have 
meeting minutes. They're posted when I get them. But also a new feature that we have is are the videos that are being recorded of these meetings. So if you press here, you will go to YouTube and it'll take you directly to the YouTube channel and you can watch the meetings or the other videos that we've created. Down here, um, each supervisorial district is here and um, I'm not going to show you because I, I just don't have that much time, but please review these and make sure um, everything's accurate. We did find pictures for you all. So um, you're all represented. And then on the right hand side of the site, you'll notice that we have just some any if anyone wants to make an appointment, this is the wait while app, which the VSOs are currently using to make appointments. Um, and then under that, three very popular um, topics right now, which college fee waiver, women veterans and minority veterans. I'm going to if you hit the logo on any page, it'll take you back to the home page. We have a search bar here. We have the mission. Um, right here we have the vision and then. Advocacy, which is what we're uh, describing, the, what the VSOs do is that this is a uh, finder location. Now this is much more interactive than the past website, which hadn't been redone for at least seven years. Um, so if you hit this, you'll find a map. Um, which. I can show you that. Here's the map. Here are all the MVA locations. And if you enter your location, it'll give you should give you the closest one. Going down on the page, here's the uh, most popular. Uh, questions about uh, what the VSOs deal with. And again, it's compensation, health care, pension, death benefits, education and dependent benefits. Then we have some current partnership projects that we're working on, and these will change uh, depending on what is more current. So we have the Wolf Connection, which was a resiliency training for women veterans. And then New Faces of Freedom, which we're planning on expanding this year. So that's um, in a nutshell about the uh, the new website. And please, I would please encourage you to go there, look at it, check it out, see what you think, and let me know if um, there's anything you find that should or maybe should not be there. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Thank you, Kathleen. I just want to go ahead and mention it. This is this is really a yeoman's job uh, and, and it's at times thankless because there's a lot of work that you can imagine that goes into building a website. And so I just want to publicly thank Kathleen for really taking on this job and doing such a great job. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, so. Yeah, and, uh, sorry, ahead, Derek, sorry. I, did, I didn't mean to jump in. I just I just wanted to thank the department as well. You know, I, I've been a part of these discussions and I would encourage if the commissioners have any thoughts or suggestions about the website that they email both Director Stone and Kathleen um, in order to sort of have a conversation about it. It's always, I think, open to modifications. Um, and I just wanted to express to the commissioners that if you have an idea for something, the department is all ears um, and you should bring that to their attention. Sorry, go ahead, Director. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, next, I want to bring up uh, talking on the topic of BAPO Patriotic Hall and the reopening and holding our commission meetings. I've invited our building manager, Mr. George Reynoso, to speak on the reopening of BAPO Patriotic Hall. Take it away, George. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners and guests. Yes, as uh, uh, Director Stone has just said, we were very excited to announce that we will be uh, opening up Bob Hope Patriotic Hall for daily services, and we've targeted May 2nd, which is a Monday. And again, we'd be open Monday through Friday, um, you know, allowing the staff and our tenants uh, to come in and provide uh, all the wonderful services they, they do to the veterans of, of our communities and throughout, uh, throughout the county. Um, we'll be open, uh, we, 
have given staff hours that we've already that we will be providing tomorrow. Uh, we've already met with our uh, three in large in house tenants and they're aware of this. And again, we couldn't be uh, more excited than to be able to come back and hopefully stay open. Um, and uh, you know, again, have the wonderful building that we have open for the veterans. Um, we're also um, beginning to um, receive field some requests for events. Um, and at this point in time, we are, you know, we, we will consider uh, events um, in regards to, uh, you know, having them. And, you know, really, you know, we want to be flexible with everyone to ensure that we, you know, are able to share the building. Um, you know, one of the things that um, we will not necessarily do um, at the very onset is I know we had um, a couple of days a month in pre COVID where we would be open for um, late evenings. We will not be doing that just yet. You know, we are working off limited staffing. So, you know, once we can go through this opening process and, you know, see what we can open up and be flexible for, we will announce that at that time. Um, you know, another thing that we mentioned in regards to our conversations um, with our large in-house tenants is, you know, really, ensuring that um, you know we talked about the services you know we really want to uh, focus on ensuring that you know we provide you know a wide spectrum of services to the veterans um, you know and you know we were really glad that we were able to confirm that you know whether it be um, vet benefits um, housing um, assistance with jobs and all the different things legal assistance a lot of the things that are tenants and some of the providers that they will be bringing in um, will hopefully be again what um, you know what we were doing before and a, a more of an enhancement and making sure that we are indeed the one stop service center uh, for the veterans of the county. Um, beyond that, you know, the beat goes on in regards to the building. Uh, it's a beautiful building, but very um, uh, you know challenging to ensure that we um, keep in great condition and keep all the various systems running. We're on it. I'm on it. And, you know, I'd like to really thank uh, 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 Director Stone uh, for uh, her assistance and making sure that I have what I need to make sure that this wonderful building, uh, you know, is open and hopefully stays open. And, you know, again, is, you know, the core center for all the services that not only the department, but all of our uh, partners can give to the veterans and that's it. Thank you, George. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just a few last things that I want to also mention. Um, in accordance with Los Angeles Supervi Supervisors Board Orders, we have April 17th is Cambodian Genocide Remembrance Day. April 11th to the 17th is Black Maternal Health Week. April is DMV Donate Life Month, and that relates to being a organ donor. And of course, April is also Military Child Month. So I just want to remind us all that um, th those are issues that are important not only to our supervisors, but to our community. Uh, and I welcome you all to take a moment to celebrate those, those dates. Uh, I also would like to ask the commissioners and public to help us collect a list of events that are going on throughout the county. We do have a small staff, but we are interested in, in supporting the, the community our, the best way we can through social media or through departmental presentations, representations. An example of that was last Friday, um, the DMH held, hosted a mental health recovery day at the USS Iowa. Um, they had some great organizations out there uh, for veterans to visit. Uh, on May 10th, we will be hosting the Carry the Load event here at Patriotic Hall. Uh, Carry the Load is a nonprofit organization. Some of you may remember it from years past. It honors those who paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, through their service as a, uh, either through the military as veterans or um, as first responders. And they, take a flag, they, on the 28th of April, they begin a relay that goes down either side of the nation, carrying flags down um, through, the, through the route. Um, 
and down uh, the central uh, central route of, of uh, the nation to meet in Texas on Memorial Day. Our leg is begins on May 10th. They'll go through the National Cemetery. They'll meet uh, for our final uh, piece at, uh, we've requested a partnership with Dodgers, LA Dodgers, and so we'll meet at Dodgers Stadium and walk the, I believe it's approximately three miles to Patriotic Hall, where we'll hold a press conference. We're partnering with the Sheriff's Department. We've asked um, also the Fire Department, first responders and veterans to be a part of those um, that will walk along with us. They can carry their own flags um, or they can stand and march behind our flag and that uh, uh, they carry the low flag and meet here at Patriotic Hall or stand by and, and, and greet the walkers as they come in at Patriotic Hall approximately five o'clock that afternoon. Again, that's May 10th. On May 28th, Supervisor, Supervisor Barger will be hosting her 2022 tribute to veterans and military families at Arcadia Park. And under the leadership of the 5th District Deputy Roberto Alvarez, uh, we're, we're assisting in the organization and the staffing of that event. Historically, we've had counselors filing claims on site, on site and we'll, we will do again. And just a reminder that Memorial Day is quickly approaching. Uh, we have invitations at Five Points East Los Angeles, the National Cemetery, and Woodlawn, Woodlawn's uh, Celestial Gardens. Um, that invitation has gone out to Commissioner McFadden. Um, I'd love to want to reconnect and see if uh, we'll be able to have uh, commissioner representation at these events. Um, because again, as, our, as I mentioned, the staff is small. I'm um, obligated to speak at five points. And so we hope to have representation at the National Cemetery and at Woodlawn and others that will come, uh, come to us at, um, a bit later. Um, I, in, in hearing today's topic, I'd like to suggest a briefing by Dimitri De Silva, um, who uh, has been working on the topic of employment, the employment policy related to, um, related to uh, the disability uh, uh, points for veterans. And then um, related to Mr. Smith's request, I'd be honored to reach out to Mr. Smith next week to discuss his request. Uh, and for Ms. Fernandez, I just have to say I'm also a fan of Boeing. Back many years ago in my core fellowship, it was sponsored by Boeing. I was the Boeing Fellow that year, and I want to thank them for their efforts then and their efforts, continued efforts now. With that, I close out my report and stand by for any questions. Great. Thank you, Director Stone. Appreciate it. Uh, commissioners, any uh, questions of the department, comments, any thoughts on the website? Let us know. Feel Ms. Commissioner Jolia, Chair. Commissioner, go ahead. You know, I, I really want to say thank you. And I know I say this is maybe cliche, but to the MBA when it comes to claims, you know, given my involvement with VPAN, claims is always going to be that one. It's a heavyweight contender when it comes to services needed. But I'm going to share something that Ms. Stone may not know. So not all the time do I meet with veterans that fall under LA County. For example, we service from Orange County, Riverside, San Diego. So as we do our military functions, speak to these reservists, guardsmen, Marines, we spend a lot of time, almost every weekend, we're at a drill facility. And uh, today I was going through all the cases that I was working through the Unitas Network. And I was working with veterans that are on Ventura County, San Bernardino County, San Diego, and in the process of doing that, uh, their appointments are as far out as July and August, but the LA MVA somehow, some way with their mighty team figure out how to service these veterans that were, were referring to them in real time. I was pretty, it, I wasn't, it wasn't shocking, but it was, it, it wasn't, I guess, surprising, but to hear that the first available appointment that I could get for one of my soldiers was all the way in July. And it's because they're being bombarded just like LA is. But I, I'm just always so impressed on how George Dixon, Stephanie Stone and all that team 
somehow, some way are able to reach out to these service members that we refer through Unite Us. And I have been in a situation where I have just barely hung up with the service member that I referred to MBA. And minutes later, the veteran calls me back and tells me, you know, I just got a call. That's how fast the MBA is moving. So thank you so much, Stephanie Stone, because when you compare it to the other counties, you're you're there, you're doing great and you're taking on these cases immediately. So thank you very much from somebody from VPAN and somebody from the Unitas platform. Thank you. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, Commissioner Leal, I really appreciate those comments and all those credits go to uh, George Dixon and Chris Duarte and his, their staff because they really are um, constantly being um, bombarded with calls or with people standing by at their doors. And, and even now, and, and I, I hesitate to use the phrase post-pandemic um, period, but, but they are on the phone constantly early mornings, late afternoons, early evenings. Um, I I I want to say say thank you, and I'll say thank you in their in their name. But honestly, they they do a great job, and I appreciate you recognizing them. You welcome him. Any other commissioners have questions of the department? This is Commissioner Gutierrez. Um, I I just want to you know again, great job for, to Kathleen. Uh, you can definitely tell you put in a lot of work on the website. Uh, it's nice to see that we're moving from being an online brochure to an actual functional website that does stuff for you. I mean, it's just, uh, we've been waiting a long time, so it's nice to see that, it, that we're there. So and so thank you to you and your team. Uh, for, the, for, for all the rest of the MBA staff, um, we're, we're, I'm looking forward to, to the building opening up again. We're so excited for that. I can tell you I miss it. Uh, there's there's a feeling you get every time you walk through that lobby. Uh, so it's good, and it, that building means so much to me and, and the rest of the veterans in, in LA County. That it's nice to see that we're finally going to be uh, getting back in there. So thanks for maintaining it and keeping it up over the last two years. Um, and I look forward to seeing everybody. Well, and those thanks are going to go specifically to to George and uh, Chuck. Most of you know Chuck, who's been at, in our department for nearly 35 years. Um, both of them have strict ownership over this over this building. They love it as much as I do, as much as you do, and they're going to keep an eye on it and, and get us open as soon as possible. Good job to George and Chuck then. Thank you. Okay. Any other commissioners, thoughts, concerns? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Director Stone. I appreciate it. And we'll continue to uh, provide website suggestions and comments moving forward and uh, talk more about uh, Memorial Day events and commissioner attendance. Moving on to our next agenda item. Uh, so this is an opportunity for commissioners to put things on our agenda. And we generally uh, have to do some back and forth with. Uh, sorry, there's some feedback on the line. Thanks. Um, uh, some back and forth. Oh, Commissioner Jackson yes. Kelly, how are you? Yes, uh, you were requesting things to be put on the next agenda. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering if we could possibly have someone from Metro come to discuss uh, naming of the different stations and how we go about that process. Okay. We'll definitely annotate that and record that suggestion. Thank you very much. Any other commissioners have agenda items that they'd like to propose? Uh, Commissioner Allman, uh, yeah, Chairman Allman, uh, Dennis Anderson. Um, I'm getting a continuous uh, stream of uh, queries about uh, emergency housing for veterans or transition housing for veterans. And 
if we could just have an update that that um, that gives an overview of the county's uh, circumstances at the moment, whether that is Lhasa, uh, Vash, uh, or any of the big programs like PATH, um, something that says when we don't know exactly what to do, how can we do it, take a first step? Um, so just a, a broader update regarding the emergency shelter capacity in LA County. Is that, yes, is that correct? That's okay. correct. To to have as as good a uh, 30,000 feet perspective uh, and just understand where things uh, are right now with uh, uh, raw numbers on availability, uh, either of uh, VASH or SSVA uh, or, or entry to emergency or transitional. Okay, I think um, we could reach out to Lhasa or even within uh, the, the, the county, there's a um, homeless executive that maybe we can reach out to. So we'll definitely get that recorded um, in the minutes and start uh, working on scheduling. Thank you. Uh, to piggyback on Director Stone's suggestion, I do think we should get a briefing on veteran employment preferences. Um, I I thought that the our first public comment was um, informative. I don't know enough about county hiring processes, but if we can maybe get somebody from county HR to to speak on that issue. Um, I'm also vaguely familiar uh, with the Veteran Internship Program, which is a program within LA County that offers internships to veterans in various departments. Um, on the topic of hiring initiatives, maybe we can uh, get a briefing on, on the Veteran Internship Program. Again, these all won't be at the same time, but I think if we can put them in queue, yep. um, we, can, we can start to dig into these different issues. Any other commissioners have potential items for agendizing? Chairman, this is a Commissioner Joe Leal. I think what I would like to see next uh, meeting, actually, I don't think I would like to see the update regarding the parking structure and the um, homeless contingency that we're talking about that was presented before for Patriotic Hall. I know you and I mm -hmm. discussed it along with. Uh, with with uh, Ms. Stone uh, regarding that. So I would like to get an update on where we're at on that, please. Okay, would you like a separate briefing or do you think we could include it in the department report? That is a good question. Uh, Ms. Stone, how would you like to see that? Is that something that you would like to report or do you want that uh, on a separate? I could, I could actually include it within my report. Uh, it, it falls under the unfunded. Um, so I can I can actually throw it into my report easily. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you. OK, so we'll keep that within the department report. Commissioner Leon, we're good. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. OK, great. Um, so one thing we'll add for uh, next meetings department report is an update on the parking structure housing initiative. Any other commissioners? Okay, great. Um, we'll get all of those suggestions recorded in the minutes and um, start working on scheduling. If we can get to the next agenda item, please. Okay, good are the order. Commissioners, uh, feel free. Commissioner Liao, uh, it's, your, uh, it's your show. Well, no, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Great presenters, by the way. I, I definitely appreciate that. This is information so that you know that, for example, this weekend, I again will be at some reserve centers uh, speaking to troops that are deploying and those that are returning. So all this information gathered today um, is going to be shared. Uh, that being said, a lot of activity has been going on within SB1, a lot of unit functions, as I mentioned. Uh, has been taking place. Upcoming events that we got coming up um, are, and, and this is the place to talk about this, correct, Chair? This particular portion? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay, so, thank you. 
So we have a, a, a few events coming up. One of them as close as um, uh, we have a partnership with Laidlaw's Harley Davidson in San Gabriel Valley that we're doing. It's going to be a wellness event with Laidlaw's Harley Davidson with a high focus, obviously, for resources for veterans and family members. Uh, we're also having uh, a wellness day, which is a golf uh, golfing that's coming up at the end of this month for SD1. Uh, and then we have my favorite, my brainchild that I created some years back called the Heroes Corner uh, at Fairplex, where I have about 20 providers, MBA being one of them, uh, CalVet being another, uh, all the way down to having the claim representatives there during the Fairplex uh, on May 6th to provide direct services to the 60,000 projected participants that will walk through there. Very happy to be collaborating with those resources. Now, not too long ago, I had put out that we had a unit that went out and supported Afghan refugees. Uh, we did have a, sketch, a set welcome home. However, due to the lowest bidder when it comes to government contracting, the flight was pushed out to midnight, uh, it, which prevented us from seeing them. I have spoken to that commander. They are back. They are going to be drilling this weekend. They have invited those that shared the interest to come and speak to the command and present anything that they want to those soldiers in that command for those service members that returned, they're welcome to do so either this month or next month, however you want to do it. The command is looking forward to it. It won't be anything that's going to be, in other words, it'll be an up close and personal uh, from the hip field expedient type of presentation. Uh, and these service members really appreciate that. Uh, so that being said, just just uh, I was very happy to see that Mr. Jim Zenner was going to share each individual SD uh, upcoming events, uh, along with the Chief Ms. Stone as well for providing that because those are very important. If you're a commissioner, I've always said this, go out, get involved, get very close to your SDs, those uh, VPANs, because they're doing amazing things to include uh, the MBA. That's pretty much what I got. Just keep a close lookout. Anything that we have, obviously, we send to MBA to push out and distribute. But there is a lot of activity. There is another variant that's coming out. So hopefully that doesn't delay most of what we're looking to do. Uh, so just be careful. Uh, be safe out there. That's pretty much what I got. Anything else comes up, obviously, we'll push it out. Thank you, everybody. That concludes my portion. Chair, back to you. Thanks, Commissioner. Commissioner Moore, go to the order. Anything to add? Okay, Commissioner Jackson Kelly. Yes, I just want to say that uh, last month uh, was last month was Women's History Month, and I was on at Heroes Hall in Orange County. And if you have not seen their display, their veteran display, try and get out there and see that it is awesome on the fairgrounds in Orange County. Um, we also did a tribute to the 6888 celebrating the gold medal, uh, gold congressional medal that was signed by the president. We did a presentation there and it was very well attended. And, and also I traveled to, when I traveled to Dubai, I was able to participate in the women's history celebration that they had there. So Women's History Month was celebrated very widely in the in the, in Dubai. So that is all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Appreciate it. Uh, I received an up update from Commissioner McFadden that she had to drop, so she will be unavailable for good of the order. Um, and uh, Commissioner Campbell is on leave. I believe Commissioner Rodarte is not with us. Commissioner Rodarte, are you there? Okay, Commissioner Gutierrez, do you have anything to add for good of the order? I, yeah, I, Director Stone already touched on it a little bit, but uh, I, I wanted to just mention the uh, 24th annual tribute to veterans and military family, families again, hosted by the 5th District Supervisor. Uh, we're back in person again. Uh, it, this was one of the events that I attend when I left the, the military, I looked forward to every year. So it's nice to have it back in person. It was done virtually last year uh, and, and it, it was a good event, but it's, it's just nice to have everybody back out 
uh, at the uh, Arcadia Park. Uh, so please come on out. I put the link in the uh, chat to register for it. Uh, and I, I hope to see everybody out there so we can get it back to the way, way it was pre-pandemic. So uh, that was it. That and oh, and uh, the May 4th uh, event that Northrop mentioned, I'll send the flyer over to Stephanie so she can distribute it out. Thank you. Great, thanks, uh, thanks again. And Commissioner Anderson, um, any comments for go to the order? Go to the order um, on April 23rd, a Saturday. I think that's uh, coming up a week from Saturday. Um, the um, VPAN will also join with the um, Veterans Outreach, which is an event of uh, 18 years standing in the Antelope Valley. It began as a stand down and evolved into the one day outreach where we have uh, uh, access to VA services, to Mental Health America, to the um, veteran, uh, the VA Veterans Center uh, counseling and, and probably 15 or 20 other uh, nonprofits and volunteer groups that uh, gather for um, haircuts, services, dental work, VA registrations, uh, support of that kind. And VPAN is coming in with a wellness day that's going to feature some um, uh, scaled up celebrities and also uh, dining. N normally about 120 um, veterans who usually fall in the uh, elderly or the at-risk category uh, circulate through there, but there are also younger veterans who have found uh, opportunities like the Northrop Grumman programs. So we're looking forward to it. It's at the uh, Grace Chapel in Lancaster, Saturday, um, April 23rd, starting about 9 a.m. Great, thank you. And I, I skipped my good of the order. I, I did wanna mention, um, as many of you know, I've been tracking the development of VA West LA for going on seven years now. Two weeks ago, we had a federal advisory committee meeting in which VA briefed out significant investment in the North Campus. So fiscal year 21 was approximately $20 million committed. And for fiscal year 22, uh, there was approximately $40 million committed, uh, 20 million of which will go toward the installation of new wet utilities, which was a significant um, barrier to the development of permanent supportive housing on campus. Uh, a lot of that money came from the American Rescue Plan, um, and it was um, a pretty, uh, you know, uh, good good to hear that VA is making the necessary investments on campus to get permanent supportive housing built. So credit to to the senior VA leadership for making that investment. And um, I just wanted to make everyone aware that you know that's roughly sixty million dollars in in two years, which is uh, in terms of this. Um, particular project, uh, unprecedented. Uh, that's a lot of money in, in just two years. Um, the project will need future funding, and that's something that is always of a concern for me as far as making sure that the, the resources are necessary to um, you know, execute the vision of the draft master plan. But um, for fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22, that's roughly $60 million. So credit to VA for for making that investment. And with that, um, agenda item 13 is adjournment. So if there are no objections from the commissioners, we'll just go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Okay, I think we're done for today. Thank you very much. And thanks to the department staff for enabling this meeting, Jose, Stephanie, and obviously Director Stone. Thank you again. And we will see everyone next month. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Take care.